Welcome to episode 112 of the Refuse Fascism Podcast, a podcast brought to you by volunteers with Refuse Fascism. I'm Sam Goldman, one of those volunteers and host of the show. Refuse Fascism exposes, analyzes, and stands against the very real danger and threat of fascism coming to power in the United States. If you appreciate what we do on our show, we need your help reaching more listeners who care about the fascist threat. How, you ask? Super simple. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen, but really review us on Apple Podcasts. Share episodes on your social media. Thanks to everyone who already does. And donate to support the show by visiting refusefascism.org and hitting that donate button. With all the big monetized shows that have staff and publicists and staff, we appreciate that you value what we have to say. We read all your reviews, emails, comments, tweets. After listening to this episode, share your thoughts with us. You can leave us a voicemail at anchor.fm forward slash refuse dash fascism forward slash message. That was a lot. So just click the link in the show notes. In today's episode, we are sharing some fury, some clarity, some hope, and a lot of real talk on the historic juncture to fight to stop the reversal of Roe. But first, we want to mention two stories as they relate to the fascist threat. First up, Hungary played host to the U.S.-based CPAC, a major fascist political conference. This is no coincidence. Hungary's leader, Viktor Orban, now in his fourth term, is an inspiration to much of the American fascist movement, with Tucker Carlson repeatedly over the last few years broadcasting live from what he sees as a fascist paradise. Catherine Joyce summed this up succinctly, quote, less than a week after a mass killing in Buffalo motivated largely by the racist, quote unquote, replacement theory, speakers at CPAC didn't shy away from reiterating its key argument. There is a concerted effort underway to, quote unquote, replace the white majorities of countries in Europe, North America, and elsewhere with non-white immigrants, end quote. This isn't a guess or an inference. Here is a quote from Orban's speech on his fourth inauguration, two days after the massacre. Quote, Part of the picture of the decade of war facing us will be recurring waves of suicidal policy in the Western world. One such suicide attempt that I see is the Great European Population Replacement Program, which seeks to replace the missing European Christian children with migrants, with adults arriving from other civilizations, end quote. Carlson, Mark Meadows, ideologues from the Heritage Foundation, and Trump himself all spoke alongside Orban and other leading European fascists who have referred to Jewish people as quote-unquote stinking excrement and Roma people as quote-unquote animals, who have helped run campaigns for the unrepentant descendants of Benito Mussolini and who claim from the stage that non-white immigration is worse than the nuclear bomb. The ruling Hungarian fascists have also led the way in banning gender studies from universities and are explicit about connecting the drive to control women with their attempts to exclude anyone who isn't white. Orban says, quote unquote, missing European Christian children, end quote. Supreme Court Justice Sam Alito talks about the, quote unquote, domestic supply of infants, but they're all just advocating white supremacist forced birth. While we've talked about Hungary in several episodes on this show, I want to encourage folks to go back and listen to episode 95 with Catherine Joyce that was uploaded January 16th and give it a listen and read her latest salon piece that I quoted from covering CPAC titled CPAC Hungary Global Right Doubles Down on quote unquote replacement theory. This is what tyrants do. Click the link in the show notes. We don't really cover primaries on the show, but we got to mention Doug Mastriano won the GOP primary to run for governor of Pennsylvania, where the GOP holds that position about half the time. Mastriano is not merely the endorser of the big lie, as dangerous as all those endorsers are. He is an open advocate of stealing elections who, if victorious, would be in an official position to overturn Pennsylvania's popular vote and swing the 2024 presidential election. 
He brought six buses of people to the January 6th insurrection and crossed police lines himself. He has embraced QAnon and many of the most aggressive elements of the Christian fascist movement, including a church famous for using assault weapons in prayer. He has promised to ban critical race theory on his first day in office. And all this has been a rallying cry for the Trumpist movement, with Trump's endorsement and Jenna Ellis at his primary victory party. I mention this because the Republic fascist movement is screaming at you, screaming at you. There are no norms or rules they will abide. The rules they do keep will be rewritten as weapons to bludgeon. Relying on Democrats alone to solve this as they seek common ground with these fascists who call them traitors or on elections these fascists have no interest in respecting is deadly. With that, here is what I said at last Saturday's protests that continues to ring true. I'm Sam Goldman and I am here just like you're here because we have a moment right now to act, to stop, to stop the Supreme Court from taking away abortion rights. right to 
abortion, their society will be prevented from running at all. We will bring it to a halt before we let them take away abortion rights. If the Supreme Court overturns Roe and finds there to be no legal basis for the right to abortion, this would be a historic and devastating milestone, the first time that a previously recognized constitutional right has been ripped away, a right that has been fundamental to people's lives for generations, and the loss of which will impact generations to come. This would be a massive attack on women one half of humanity that on top of everything else would fall hardest upon Black, Latina, and other particularly oppressed peoples. Not only that, they are going to keep going further. Bans with no exception for rape normalize. Criminalization for miscarriage. Criminalization for obtaining abortion pills. Passing a federal ban on abortion connected to the enshrining of fetal personhood, banning birth control, criminalizing medical professionals and pregnant people, going after sex education, and more. Griswold, Loving, Brown, Oberville, all directly in their sights and within arm's reach, dismantling privacy rights and gutting equal protection. It is unconscionable to do nothing while a fundamental right of half of humanity is being ripped away. Now is the time for us to act on the orientation made famous by Mario Savio, a student leader of the free speech movement at University of California, Berkeley, back in 1964, when he said, There's a time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious, makes you so sick at heart, that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. And you've got to indicate to the people who run it, to the people who own it, that unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. The National Day of Action this Thursday, May 26th, called for by Rise Up for the number abortionrights.org. With people leaving work and school at noon, converging in the streets for marches where they can, needs to take off everywhere. Find or host a convergence, learn more, get resources, and contribute to this effort. Visit Rise Up for the number abortionrights.org. We want to give a hearty cheer to the students who walked out this past week for abortion rights high school students, middle school students. And we want to share some of what Liz, a student organizer, said at the rally in New York City at Union Square this past Thursday to hundreds of students who walked out. Have a listen. It doesn't matter if you've had an abortion. It doesn't matter if you identify as female. It doesn't matter if you have a uterus. Everyone needs to be involved. Everyone needs to be involved in this fight because it's a fight that's going to affect our generation. Even if we live in New York, and even if it's a sanctuary state, that is not enough. We need to fight for people all across the country. We need to fight for people of every age, of every race, of every culture, of every socioeconomic background, so that they can ensure the right to a safe and legal abortion. We have seen the consequences of what happens if this right is denied. These are photos of women who have died because they could not get access to a safe abortion. And that will happen if Roe v. Wade is overturned. People often say, oh, we'll take it to the voting booth. But we are students. We don't have that option. Most of us here are under 18. And so in order for us to make change, this is the way that we can do it. We can be here in the streets and we can rise up. And even if we could vote, this decision is one that will come in a matter of weeks. We cannot wait to November. We have to show the Supreme Court that we will not allow this to happen. This means we have to put everything we have into this fight and we have to put everything we have right now. Don't let anyone bother you. Don't let anyone take away from this fight. What we are doing here is important. 
Don't let anyone take away from that. For more on the student walkouts, follow at rise for the number abortion rights on Instagram. We just had to share and close this episode with the powerful and incisive speech Coco Das gave in Texas and Austin on May 14th, prior to marching to counter protest the Trump rally happening that same day in Austin. Coco is a member of the Refuse Fascism Editorial Board and a frequent host and guest on the show. When Rise Up for Abortion Rights started in January, we were being prepared by the Democratic Party and the mainstream of the women's movement to accept the end of Roe. We kept hearing, Roe is gone, Roe has fallen. The best we can do is find our way around this to protect abortion rights in some of the blue states and ferry the people who need abortions to there. Never mind, yeah, fuck that. Never mind that there are Christian fascists at every level of power who are ready to seize on their victory of ending Roe to ban all abortions, to ban birth control, to ban abortion pills, to force women to submit pregnancy tests before traveling out of state. To sue and put bounties on people who help anyone get an abortion because you know what? These people know the depth of love in our hearts. They know that. They know our generosity and they want to crush it. You can't just hand over a victory to these vicious fascists and expect that they'll let you keep the rest of your rights. Let's not delude ourselves. In January, a movement was born to break the silence and prepare people not to accept the end of Rome, but to fight like hell to save it. We held powerful rallies with many youth coming out who instinctively understood what losing the legal right to abortion would do to their lives. But most people did not even know that the Supreme Court was poised to overturn the right to abortion. But then something happened. Somebody leaked Samuel Alito's draft majority opinion. This document is from the Dark Ages. And it is, it is preparing to slam people back. And tens of thousands of people who thought they might be able to accept the end of Roe suddenly woke up and they lost their adjustment to what they thought they could accept. And people flooded the streets. School walkouts from one week to the next doubled, tripled, quadrupled. And I am so full of love for the youth that walked out all over. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Suddenly everyone was talking about abortion and it became a societal question no one could ignore. And the fury, the determination that you have brought to the streets is not only an inspiration, it is how we win. The attack on abortion comes from a Christian fascist movement that has been organizing for decades, who could not tolerate the social progress that people in the streets, people doing just what you're doing now, fought for and won from the civil rights movement through the women's and gay liberation movements. This Christian fascist movement that could not stand a world where women are not confined to the home where black people can walk into any damn place they will please. And gay people are out of the closet. These Christian fascists could not stand that. They're not interested. And they were determined to take us back and they lied and they harassed and they murdered and they ran one lunatic politician after another and by seizing the initiative, seizing the public square, seizing the terms of the debate, they have brought us to this moment. Yes, they are ruthless. They are terrifying in their ignorance and their hatred. 
and they are powerful, but they are not all powerful. There is one thing they fear more than anything else, and that is the people rising up. and girls filling the streets with their fury and joined by everyone who cares about the half of humanity that is female. To be born female in this society, in this world, means entering a world that is steeped in thousands of years of traditions chains. A world dripping with misogyny. A world of rape, of sexual exploitation, of shame, and being told over and over again that you are worthless. That you are invisible. That your life and your body does not belong to you at all, but it is the property of men, of society, of the church, of the government. Losing the right to abortion and letting this country fall to Christian fascists will have a global impact. Never again! Because this is the most powerful country in the world. So this is the time to fight for women, to fight for the half of humanity that is born female, because if half of humanity is not free, then no one is free. But that is not the only side of the story. Look at Latin America. Look at what happens when the fury of women is unleashed, and they refuse to take this shit anymore. Look at what happens when millions with a heart for their fellow human beings who are being oppressed take to the streets together. And they say, no more. No more. No more. No more. And what happens if we stay in the streets together until we win, until the rulers of this system have no choice but to concede to our demand that this draft opinion get thrown in the dustbin of history? have a victory to stand on, and the people are strengthened in every fight against oppression. So I don't know about you, but I look out at the beautiful faces of our youth, and I don't want them to have to do this over and over and over again, just hanging on to our rights while fascism is rammed down our throats, and the planet burns, and there is a real danger of a world war that goes nuclear because we live in a system ruled by capitalism, imperialism, a system that cannot function without vicious exploitation and oppression. And I know that many of you agree with me that it is this system that must go extinct, not humanity. And even if you do not agree with me, even if you think this system can be reformed, it is beautiful and necessary that we are standing here together in this fight. Our diversity of opinions and backgrounds is our strength, and we need to have principled and honest discussions and debate because that terrifies these fascists too. Now I'm going to say, I would not be here on this stage speaking to y'all if it was not for the work of Bob Avakian who has been analyzing the attacks on abortion and the Christian fascist movement for decades. He is also the architect of a new communism and a road map for making revolution in this country. I, that's right. I would not be here if I could not have some hope that we don't have to keep fighting the same fight, but we can actually fight for a whole new world. Where humanity, where humanity can flourish. We are living in a time when the future of humanity truly hangs in the balance. A time when the problems we face will be resolved in one way or another, as Avakian says, in a way that is something terrible or something truly emancipating. And I don't know about you, but I want to go for the truly emancipating. But right now, we have a chance to defeat these fascists. They are gathering down the street and celebrating that orange turf <laughs> and thinking that they can't lose while inside their boots, they are shaking. 
because they don't have the people on their side. They don't have right on their side. They don't have history on their side. They don't have reality on their side. And they need your silence and your obedience. And what they have to do to get that could be their downfall. And they know that. We have to remain strong. We have to remain resolute. And we have to keep coming back and keep coming back until we stop the Supreme Court from overturning Roe. Two years ago, after the horrific murder of George Floyd, this country rose up in our millions. And it is only because of this that his murderer was convicted. Our power is in the streets. And if we rise up now, and we make it clear to these bloated, patriarchal, fascist assholes that if they try to take this right away, their society will be prevented from functioning. Yeah. We will bring this country to a halt. Yeah. And we can win. We can win. So I want you to say this with me. Prepare for post row. Fuck no. Post row. Post row. Post row. Fuck no. Post row. Fuck no. That's right. So all of you beautiful people, we are getting ready to march. And I think that we have enough people to take the streets. Yes. How do y'all feel about taking the streets? Yes. That was Coco Das. Follow her on Twitter at Coco underscore Das. We face a Christian fascist, theocratic, women-hating movement, and their assault on abortion is a battering ram in a broader, horrific fascist program infused with and dripping with white supremacy, xenophobia, science denialism, and it is gaining ground on many fronts. This is a movement that cannot be accommodated, cannot be appeased, and will not stop until they have imposed their nightmare vision of the world on everyone or until they are decisively defeated. Again, I encourage you to join Rise Up for the number abortionrights.org this Thursday, May 26th, everyone, everywhere, noon, leave work, leave school, raise your voice, and raise hell. Post pictures on social media with hashtag green for the number abortion. Declare together, overturn row, hell no. Forced motherhood is female enslavement, abortion on demand, and without apology. Visit Rise up for the number abortionrights.org for conversion spots or to host an action. Thanks for listening to Refuse Fascism. I want to hear from you. Share your thoughts, questions, ideas for topics or guests or lend a skill. Tweet me at Sam B. Goldman or you can drop me a line at Samantha Goldman at refusefascism.org or leave a voicemail on anger.fm forward slash refuse dash fascism. Want to support the show? It's simple. Show us some love by rating and reviewing on Apple Podcasts or your listening platform of choice. And of course, follow, subscribe, so you never miss an episode. Chip in to support our pod and content creation to help people understand and act to stop the fascist threat. You can donate by visiting refusefascism.org and hitting the donate button. Thanks to Richie Marini, Lena Thorne, and Mark Tinkleman for helping produce this episode. Thanks to incredible volunteers. We have transcripts available for each episode. So be sure to visit refusefascism.org and sign up to get them in your inbox each week. We'll be back next Sunday. And I promise we'll have an interview. Until then, in the name of humanity, we refuse to accept a fascist America.